DJ Pro for the iPad and Mac does have a lot more features than DJ Pro for the Android tablet, but you could still DJ professionally and it's still an amazing app for the Android. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know, where all the features are, how to use them, all of the settings, and stay tuned till the end of the video. I'll even show you how to connect a Bluetooth DJ controller. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna show you is the view modes. DJ Pro was able to fit so many features by separating it into the view modes. So one drawback of the Android is that we don't really get as many view modes as the iPad. We just get classic and starter. So you're gonna press this middle DJ icon to switch modes. The first one is going to be starter mode. This is if you are not really interested in DJing, you just wanna mix two songs together, have a little fun, a very easy. You have your BPM sliders here, record decks are over here, and then you could use the mixer and use the crossfader effects and easily mix your songs by using these effects in crossfader effects. I'll get back to the crossfader effects in a later part of this video. Over here we have effects. We could do different effects, different samples. This is really just for um, starting out if you just wanna have some fun. So we're gonna skip right past that. So classic mode is the mode that you're gonna be DJing in the most. I'll talk about auto mix later, but let's um, first thing you're gonna wanna know is how to load up a song and what are our music sources. So to load up a song, there's these blinking lights up here. So we're gonna press either the one on the left or the one on the right, depending on where you wanna load up the deck. So we have one on the right, let's do it on the left. So now you open up this and these are our music sources. And the great part about this app is there are streaming services integrated into it. So you could download the app, sign up for one of these streaming services and start DJing with millions of songs. So you could choose Apple Music, Tidal, SoundCloud, Beatport and Beat Source. All pretty much the same. If you already have a subscription, you could use that or do your own research, decide which subscription you want, but you could load up millions of songs right there as long as you have an internet connection. You could also use music that you have on your files on this device or local music if you have music on this specific device. So for this example, I'm just gonna use the DJ music. So let's say we wanted house club hits press it, it's loaded up. And it will start playing automatically, but we could change that in the settings. So after I show you the features, I'm gonna show you the settings, then we'll connect the controller. So in this screen, this is where you're gonna be DJing, mixing your songs together. So let's start at the top, work our way down. They're mirrored left and right, so we don't have to talk about left and right. First thing up here is going to be sync. So now what sync does is it, either, it could match the beats together, but if you just press it once, you'll get the exact same BPM on the other track. So if you are against using sync and you wanna DJ manually, which I recommend you practice doing, you, you may have trouble with these BPM sliders getting to the exact BPM, I'll show you that later. So just by being able to press it once and then we could unselect sync and DJ manually, but you got your BPMs together, you're playing two songs at the same time, you're gonna want the same BPM or exactly, or exactly double or half. Next, this is going to set a loop. So the song's playing, you press it. Now we have a four bar loop. You could go all the way down, get like a stutter effect, or you could go all the way up and loop a part of the song that you want. There are more advanced ways to control loops, but this one is always gonna be there. So it's great to have it. When you're DJing, you wanna do a lot of stuff at the same time. So having that feature there is very helpful. And on the right side, it is mirrored. Let's talk about these features in the middle. So right now we just have two record decks, but if we press this one over here, that's gonna open up our mixer section. So if you've seen anyone DJ ever, there's two turntables and a mixer. That's what this is supposed to em emulate. So now we have volume controls and we have our levels. You could see those, those levels jumping up and down. So we can see the levels and we have a volume slider, slide it up, mix the songs in. When you're mixing from song to song, you're most likely gonna be using these volume sliders. The crossfader is more for doing DJ tricks and stuff like that. Up here we have our filter. It's gonna add a high pass filter or a low pass filter. And then these tiny buttons are gonna be your gain control. But if you're using this software, you're not gonna really have to control the gain and they're the hardest buttons to use. I'll show you in the settings that it does it automatically and it does a great job at it. So let's look at that section there load up another song.
and you could see it adjusted the gain so that the songs are about the same volume. But there's a way to get more advanced features because when you're DJing, you're going to need your mixer. So we press this EQ button here and we have a mixer. You could cut out the lows, cut out the, the mids, cut out the highs, traditional mixer, and we don't lose anything. We still have our levels. We still have our volume slider over the levels. Amazing how they were able to fit so many features without taking any features away. So you could have your mixer section up here and your DJ decks. But if you press this middle button, you lose your mixer, but you get a really cool feature, which is your wave forms. This is gonna give you a visual representation of if your beats are matched up. And once you've been DJing with this software for a while, you'll know what color sounds like what, what shape sounds like what. For um, a quick tip is the bigger the waveform, the more like bass and the more full it's gonna be. And the smaller is gonna be like hi-hats and stuff like that. You can adjust, you could press this hidden drop down menu here, there's going to be a lot of hidden drop down menus. And we could change high contrast to low contrast, zoom in on our waveforms. You could also do it on the number one deck. So those are our waveforms. Next is going to be over here. We have a mixer and a, we have a sampler and a looper. So now we could set a loop, uh, which is pretty much like a beat making software inside of this software. So. So just like that, we could set a loop, do some scratching to it, or play it with the other songs. We have our BPM here. This is for the loop. If sync's on, it's going to match the song that's playing. Pause, play, and tiny volume slider down here. If we press the, this button here with the squares next to it, that is going to open up our sampler. So there we have our sampler. And to change these packs, you could either have them over here or get more packs. There's a lot to choose from. Download them all. I don't think it costs any money. And then see what they sound like. See which one you're going to use. Same thing in the loopers. There's all different packs that sound differently, different genres of music. Test them out on your own. So I'm going to leave the waveforms here. One thing I missed with the, uh, with the music selectors up here if you hold it in, you get some more options. You could double the song. You could open up a scratch tool, which I was doing the scratching to. It's a pretty good scratch tool. Or you could eject the track or add it to your queue. So now over here is going to be our BPM controls. So you could raise the BPM, lower the BPM, adjust your range. The higher the range, the higher BPM you could go, but it's going to be less precise. So I recommend keeping it on 16 or 25. You could edit the BPM. You're not really gonna need to do that unless you get really advanced. Over here is your BPM slider. It's always gonna be there. If you wanna do manual beat matching, it is hard, especially depending on what device you have with the touch screen to get the exact BPM. But you could, you could type it in here or you could do the trick with the sync button like I showed you. This is gonna be our record deck or our jog wheel. So if you've seen anyone DJing, they're going to be playing with, with these things called jog wheels. These ones in this view mode, and it's the only view mode we have, it makes it more like a more like a record deck. So you could use it just like a jog wheel. Also, these waveforms are active, so they'll do the same thing if you don't want to use the wheel. Now, this arm is active. You could scrub through the track with that, which is a cool feature, but you're probably not going to use it, but it is there. So you could adjust the track with the waveform or the jog wheel, or there's the plus and minus buttons to speed it up quickly or slow it down quickly. When you see DJs like moving these and they're not scratching, they're adjusting the beat to get them lined up. So you see how these beats are off? You can adjust it. and now they're lined up. So while it's playing, you could adjust it that way if it's easier to use a button or you could like tap the jog wheel, very easy to control. Here is our crossfader all the way to the left. It's gonna play the song on the left. In the middle, both tracks are gonna be playing. On the right, it's gonna play out the light. You could slowly fade it in. Um, when I first started DJing, I used the crossfader for everything, but later on I learned that you're gonna wanna use these volume sliders and the crossfader is mostly for scratching and DJ tricks. 
we press this button down here, you can turn on crossfader effects. So it uses one of these effects to do transitions for you when you move the crossfader. I find it to be annoying because I like to do it myself, but if you're just starting out, it's a really easy way to get from one song to another with the crossfader effects. Down here, we have a button. This is for Neuromix. You can do instant acapellas or instant instrumentals, just like that. It's always there, very easy to use. Or you could press the drop down menu. This is new with the update, but we could get two effects. Press it down again. We could choose the effects for one and two. And these are effects that are going to be there. Just another way to use your effects. Like I said, we want to do more stuff at the same time. So if something else is going on on the other part of the screen, you have effects here. And then the last one is, is going to be skip. Press the drop down menu again. Now we could skip 16 bars through the track. Let's say we wanted to set a cue point, 16 bars through the track. Now we could easily do that. And the reason they put it there is because if we're doing the next thing that I'm going to show you, setting cue points, we could have the skip and the cue points in the same screen and see where it is. So to get to more features, you press this. There's these uh, mixer buttons in the corners. So you press that, you lose access to your jog wheel but you could still do what the jog wheel does with the waveforms. First one's gonna be Nero Mix. This is a more advanced way to control Nero Mix than the one I just showed you. So you could slowly take out the drums, slowly take out the harmonics or the vocals. This is a new feature, Mute FX. It's gonna put an echo when you take out the vocals. It makes it sound really cool and professional. And you could turn it on and off over here or choose how many beats you want. Drop down menu, you could go Two bands if you want to simplify it, four bands if you want to complicate it. I usually keep it in three. These buttons here are going to isolate, so that's vocals only. No vocals is if you put it with the X on it, just other ways to control. It all basically does the same thing, cuts out uh, different stems of the track. It's just however you want to use it, what makes it easier with your DJing style. Next is over here, our cue points. So I'm just going to delete these and show you how to set them. So you find where you want in the track and it's convenient that we have our beat skip here. So we'll go 16 beats in, set our first cue point there. Now, if you want to edit the cue point, there's a pencil button to the top right. Then you could do a drop down menu. You can name them or you could change the color. When you change the color, they it, it comes up on if you're if you have a controller that has pads. So you can change the color easily. And then you could delete them, change the color, or delete them with the X right there. Very easy. Cue points are very important. I'm going to make more advanced videos. And when you're doing your mixes, you're going to be using the cue, cue points a lot. Next is pitch cue. It adds like um, high pitch or low pitch. You could do DJ tricks and stuff. You're not really going to use that when you first start out. Slice is similar for DJ tricks. Next one is going to be our loops. So in auto, it's going to do the same thing as up here. Just another way to be more precise with it. And you could um, put in and out and do custom loops. You could save your loops. So if, if you like a certain lyrics or a part of a song, you could save it. And then every time you load up the song, it's going to be there. Bounce. Another way to do DJ tricks. It's going to bounce things around. FX. First one's going to be pad, so add a high pass and low pass to the, to the effect that you're using. So echo with high pass, low pass, more or less like this. Really cool to use the touch screen in that way. Next is instant. It's going to add an instant effect. So when you, you just press it once, it adds the effect. You don't have to move your finger around or anything like that. Pencil button is always going to let you change things. So now we could change with that, whichever effect we want. There's a lot of effects test them out, see what they sound like, and then you could load them up into each individual box, and then you have it there. Or you could use manual. Now we could use three effects at the same time. You could control the effect. There's a bar here. You could either a slider or beats, depending on which effect it is. And then wet and dry will control how much of the effect that you hear. Drop down menu where it says the, eff where it says the effect is where you could change the effects and then you could set these effects. So I have echo, you could set it to echo only the vocals or echo only the drums. You can get really creative with Nero Mix with these effects, really cool. Last one is going to be 
a regular mixer. Same thing in the middle. But if you want to be mixing that, that way with the EQs, you could have that in the middle and then you could be using your effects. So that's why you have multiple ways to do this depending on what you're doing and your DJ style. You could do a lot of stuff at the same time. So now let's talk about settings and then we'll get to put... And then we'll plug in our controller. Press the middle button. Same way. There we have our, our different view modes. Let me just show you auto mix. What auto mix is going to do is it's going to mix for you depending on which playlist you have selected. And then you could change different parts of it. You can have it automatic, not automatic, shuffle, repeat. Really cool. It's not technically DJing, but if you are doing a gig and you have to use the restroom, it's a good tool to have. Or if it's like a party where you don't really have to be there mixing, you could just play your playlist. So now record, pretty obvious. You could start a recording as long as you're not using music from streaming service. Settings. This setting here is going to split the output. So if you want to DJ with headphones and you're not using a controller or you're just using a Bluetooth controller, you could easily just tick on split output general. Start playback. I would turn that off because so when you load up a song, it won't start playing and you could decide when you want to play it. Protect active deck. That'll make it so you can't load up a song on a deck that you're using. So I turn that on. So let me show you. So this deck is playing and active. If I go to load up a song, you'll get this notification. Right deck is protected. You are about to load up a song. So it says right deck is protected. Do you want to load up the song? And if you want it, you can like that. Start time and stop time. This will take long. It'll take a certain amount of time to start the track or end the track. I recommend leaving it the same. Auto gain. This is the feature that I was telling you about. Make sure you keep it on because it's going to change the gain for you because it's hard to use that button. And now MIDI devices, that's where you're going to control your controllers. So like I promised, I'm going to plug in a Bluetooth controller and show you guys how to set it up. The app for Android has a lot less controllers you could use, but there are some good ones, including this one. So there's the controller. It needs to be plugged into a power source, this specific one. Some have battery powers. So it's plugged in, but it doesn't automatically connect. What we have to do is press the middle button again, go to MIDI, connect Bluetooth controller. Now press the controller, DJ control mix. And as long as it's not connected to another device, which it's not, just like that, we could start DJing right away with our with our controller, very easy. And if you want to, if you're thinking about either the Android or the iPad, check out this video of my full beginner iPad DJ tutorial.